December 26th marked 28 years since the dissolution of the Soviet Union. The first major socialist nation, and one of, if not the most famous example of a country guided by communism. Its defeat of the fascists of Europe and defense against the reactionary forces of the US is known by many across the world. However, despite its success, it fell apart and dissolved into numerous capitalist states after only 74 years. Many Marxist-Leninists across the world see this as the greatest tragedy of the modern age, and many hope to see the day it returns, which, looking at current Eastern European politics, could be very soon. But what if, hypothetically, the Soviet Union never fell in the first place? What if capitalism never took hold and Russia waved the red flag into modern day? And most importantly, what if Gorbachev was never in a Pizza Hut commercial? The first and most obvious question to ask is, why did the Soviet Union fall in the first place? And despite what some people may tell you, the USSR didn't fall simply because socialism is doomed or that it goes against human nature. In reality, the Union fell because... Well, it's a little complicated. The most obvious person to place the blame on is the man, the myth, the stained carpet himself, Gorbachev. His reforms to transition the Soviet Union into a liberal democracy directly led to economic collapse that to this day Russia hasn't fully managed to fix. However, it shouldn't have to be said that one pizza-hungry revisionist didn't cause the collapse of a socialist superpower all by himself. In truth, the most influential force in causing the fall of the Soviet Union was the second economy, an attempt at reforming Soviet society which led to corruption and a black market in the Eastern Bloc. If you want a more in-depth analysis of the second economy and the fall of the Soviet Union, Hakim made an amazing video about this subject that I'll put in the description of this video. For this timeline, the major point of divergence must be that the reforms of the second economy do not happen. Without the instability and liberal reform it created, we would never see someone like Gorbachev taking power. So, on December 26th, 1991, nothing happens in the USSR. The people of the Soviet Union prepare for New Year's festivities, but it's simply another holiday season. And it comes and goes without any major problems. So, what happens after that? The most important thing to note about this timeline is that with the survival of the Soviet Union, many socialist nations across the world who had ties to the Soviet Union survive as well. Nations such as the People's Republic of Poland, the German Democratic Republic, People's Republic of the Congo, People's Republic of Mozambique, and People's Republic of Mongolia would all survive alongside the USSR. It's also very likely that a stable USSR could mean Yugoslavia is never divided. The DPRK would never be known as the Hermit Kingdom by the West, since it'd still have many allies across the world to trade with. As a side note, the German Democratic Republic was very progressive when it came to LGBT plus rights. There were even state-owned gay bars. Because of this, I find it very likely that the DDR would be the first country to legalize gay marriage. This would inspire LGBT movements across communist countries, such as the USSR. Deng Xiaoping was appointed as chairman of the People's Republic of China very close to the point of divergence in this universe, so this is not really affected and he is still able to make his market economy reforms. This creates an interesting situation as the Sino-Soviet split was mainly due to Mao's concern that the USSR was leaning towards revisionism. And ironically, after his death in this universe, it's China who embraces market socialism and the USSR who preserves orthodox Marxism. Despite this, I can see relations between China and the Soviet Union improving as the 90s passed. So I've established that the communist nations of the world would be in a much better place. But what about the capitalist world? Especially the United States. We all know the lengths America goes to when it comes to anti-communist propaganda. So, in a world where every attempt they made to destabilize the socialist world fails and more and more communist countries rise, you better believe that America would be taking drastic action. Violence against leftist movements would rapidly increase, and US politicians would move more and more to the right. The US is well known to fund far-right Muslim groups in the Middle East, especially in Afghanistan to snuff out communist influence in the region. In this universe, America would keep doing this. Osama bin Laden is still praised as an anti-communist freedom fighter by American media, and Al-Qaeda is still a US affiliate. I have no doubt that they would start supporting them across the Middle East, especially in other communist nations in the region. 
This would define America in the 90s. The US backed Al Qaeda waging war in Afghanistan, South Yemen, and any other communist or communist affiliate nation in the region. It doesn't matter which party gets the office or what election changes in this universe, the Red Scare would once again be in full swing. Of course, all hope would not be lost. The Middle East would have the USSR as a powerful comrade against these terrorist forces, and it's highly likely America would be completely forced out of the region by the late 90s or early 2000s. Speaking of... As we enter the 2000s and get closer to modern time, the world is in a very different state. America's attempts at defeating the specter of communism have failed. From Europe to Asia to Africa, the red flag waves across millions. Less and less of the world will be under capitalism. America would very likely remain by this point. However, with less of the world to exploit, I mean, trade with, the economy simply cannot remain stable. The recession would still happen, but be much, much worse. With this, revolutionary movements would rise. Right now, in our world, we're seeing more and more people respond to American racism and police brutality with direct action. Now, imagine this level of resistance starting in the late 90s. Imagine the poor and homeless forcibly taking vacant homes during the housing crisis. Imagine any war that would be declared by the US government being met with nation-spanning resistance. The 21st century would not belong to America. It belonged to the proletariat. I've talked a lot about the serious political aspects of this world, so for a moment I'd like to talk about some of the more lighthearted parts of this universe. Animation in socialist nations was varied in style and tone, and this would continue in the years to come. The DPRK outsourced a lot of animation in the 80s, and a more stable second world would mean this animation is most widely released in socialist nations. You can let your imagination run wild imagining the DPRK equivalent of anime, Cheiburashka becoming an animation icon, TV specials made for Yushika, hey maybe Clockman becomes a staple of Czech animation. Going into the 90s, it's certain we'd see more and more video games developed in communist countries. While it's pretty difficult to say for certain what they'd be like, given that many western games in the 90s were inspired by old western animation, I could see a lot of the art direction in these socialist games being inspired by the animation that came before it. Getting into the 2000s, the rise of the internet in the socialist world would be even more interesting and full of speculation. Imagine the memes that exist in the Eastern Bloc. Imagine how the advent of a video sharing site like YouTube would change Marxist societies. Imagine Soviet boomer memes. Truly a world we're cursed to have missed. On that note, a world where the USSR survived is one where communism was never set back, but instead continued to thrive as more time passed. And while I might have had personal bias when researching and conflicts may have happened that I didn't mention, this world would definitely be a redder one. Thank you for watching.